It's fascinating. People are like, well, Donald Trump's in court. Why is he in court instead of campaigning? Because Donald Trump being in court is the greatest bully pulpit for him where he can play mm -hmm. victim. You know, he's such a snowflake. He's such mm -hmm. a victim. And Trumpers get triggered so easily that when a stupid argument like this is shot down, actually Donald Trump thinks it's going to help him politically and maybe he's right. Yeah, I'm not even a simple country lawyer and I've never seen a turnip drop, but I could hear the skepticism in the judges' voices mm -hmm. yesterday. I mean, it didn't sound like this is going very far and there's potential that they, they rule on this pretty quickly. On the political front, you're right, and on the financial front, right? I mean, we've seen these appearances be big money spinners, particularly early on. I mean, it's interesting that with each successive appearance that he makes, the amount of money he brings in for his campaign hall seems to be a little bit less. And I wonder about how well yesterday played for him. I mean, it's there, there were no cameras in the courtroom. That doesn't help him. He doesn't get the... We just have these kind of descriptions of him talking to his lawyers and getting animated when they talk about the fact that he's doing so well in the polls. And then he gave that rather kind of lackluster mini press conference in his former hotel uh, down the road. He couldn't address the crowds outside the courtroom. The weather was terrible. There was so much security outside the courtroom, he couldn't really do it. So I don't... I mean, I'm, I'm wondering whether with each of these appearances, does it become less of a political draw for him. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think Bill, Willie's right that he's, he's always said, you know, I'll, I could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. I wonder whether in this particular case, the claims of immunity have more to do with his love of authoritarianism. He's often suggested, you know, why can't I do what Erdogan can do? Why can't I do what uh, other authoritarian leaders can do? Kim Jong-un can do. He seems to have this kind of idea that that should have been his presidency. And blanket immunity for anything he may ever do wrong would seem to be the logical extension of that in his mind. Yeah. George. George, yeah, yeah, George Conway, uh, <laughs> where, do you, where does this end? Do you think, uh, as Chuck believes, that, that this argument is so preposterous uh, that Donald Trump's lawyers aren't going to be able to delay by getting the entire D.C. Circuit to listen, getting the Supreme Court to mull over it. Uh, is this something that they just sort of brush away, again, because it's such a laughable argument? Also, it's the D.C. Circuit. I mean, this isn't, this isn't some random circuit out in flyover space, <laughs> as yeah, I, the justices I'm... would call it, where I'm from. But go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm as bullish as Chuck is. I, I think this March fourth trial date could stick. Mm -hmm. I think this decision from the D.C. Circuit is going to come down within a week or two, um, probably a week, and maybe even less. I think they're probably already writing the opinion. I think they probably got a head start writing the opinion. I know that if I were the presiding judge, I would have started writing the opinion already. And I think we're going to see, I don't think there's going to be a big, uh, you know, a big deal when it comes to getting that opinion out. And I think there's a good chance the Supreme Court won't take it. Um, even if the Supreme Court does take it um, and and hears argument in March or April, they, they could issue a decision in May or June. We'd still have a summer trial. So I think hmm. one way or the other, uh, this case is going to be tried this year uh, before the before the fall. Wow. And we've already heard Donald Trump's real core argument when he comes out of the courtroom and says, if I'm convicted in this case, there will be bedlam in the country. It's just a threat of violence if they convict him. That's really his only argument here. So, Chuck Rosenberg, you are bullish, uh, as you said a little bit earlier, about how this will move along. Let's talk about the Supreme Court real quick. How do you think they will weigh this question if it does make its way up? Well, if you have a good opinion from the district court judge, Judge Chutkin, and you do, and you have a sound and perhaps unanimous opinion from the D.C. Uh, circuit panel, uh, and I agree with George, I think we'll have that soon, there may not be anything for the Supreme Court to weigh in on. I mean, remember, they get thousands and thousands of petitions each year from folks who want the Supreme Court to hear the case. Their jurisdiction, in almost every case, is completely elective. They are not required to hear this. Um, and so if you look at the reasoning below and they agree with it, my uh, my suspicion is they just move on. I'm not sure why they would need to take this case to ultimately say what I expect the D.C. Circuit will say. All right. Former U.S. Attorney Chuck Rosenberg, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate all your insights this morning. Coming